Palace of Coal. She joins us with our very own Courtney Reagan. Courtney, welcome and kick things off. Thank you very much. Well, Michelle, thank you for joining us here today on The Exchange. I guess we'll kind of just start with the consumer that you serve. I think there are so many questions as to the health of the American consumer, and we know not every consumer is the same. In your call, you talked about certainly makes sense the high income would not be as affected by inflation as a middle income consumer. But the lower income consumer seems to be doing a little better than middle. What's going on here? Well, Courtney, um, you're absolutely right. Where we are seeing the biggest pressure in our business is that middle income customer. And we saw that come on very suddenly towards the end of May, June by far our toughest month. And as you mentioned, interestingly enough, we're seeing our upper income customers be fine. In fact, we're seeing more customers and they're spending more, but we're feeling that pressure. And if you think about it, and especially in June, you hit 40 year high inflation, um, they're spending that on food and on gas. And so what's left are those discretionary categories, which largely we play in. And so um, that came on quickly. I will tell you um, the team responded with a lot of agility. Um, the customer's looking for value. So we put more value in, more promotions. Um, so that did help rebound some of our sales in July. But we're also being very prudent for the balance of year, expecting that this pressure will persist. All that being said, Courtney, um, we do see this as a moment in time. We've navigated these kind of headwinds before. And we remain with great conviction on our long-term strategy and where we're seeing that in the doors that we're remodeling and transforming. Those are actually working. There's just not enough of those right now. Margins under understandably compressed when you ended up having to promote more than potentially planned. A lot of other retailers, though, had to do somewhat similar strategies, especially to move those more discretionary categories. Understanding you may not have the same product makeup as some competitors, even still, though, your margin's far more compressed than others. How do you fix that? How do you turn that around the balance of the year if this consumer remains strained from external factors? Yeah, well, first off, Courtney, as you mentioned, um, we are contemplating that in our guide. So we are expecting the back half of the year to be more promotional as the customer's looking for that value. Um, we're also facing inflationary pressures in our cost of goods and things like freight. Um, you know, how long this is going to go on, not sure, but we are doing lots of things around our business to make sure that we can navigate this period of time. Um, we're managing through our inventory. So like I said, we're promoting, we're clearing the goods that are a little bit more perishable like the spring goods. Um, we did cut back on our receipts because we had originally planned for a stronger back half of the year. That being said, we still have plenty of new product coming in for the ever important holiday season. Um, and we're just, we're tightening the belts on things like expenses. You've just got to buckle down during this time, recognizing that we'll get through it. Um, we continue to be a very healthy and stable company. And importantly, um, we remain committed to our long-term strategy. So while this is going on, we're continuing to invest to build out those remodeled stores, which have, of course, the beautiful Sephora shop uh, front and center. Is, is cash going to be an issue for you? Inventories are high, up 47%, understanding there was some purposeful build in that number, but your cash balance relatively low. Is this something we need to be concerned about as you stay committed to the dividend? You know, if you look at Kohl's over time, we have always had strong operating cash flow, strong free cash flow. You know, what we're navigating right now, I'd say two things. One is we're continuing to invest in our stores both the remodels and putting the Sephora's in. Um, and that is, you know, that's a short-term impact. And um, as we sit here today and we look at the valuation of the company, we see an opportunity around buying back some of our shares. So we reiterated that we're doing an accelerated share repurchase of $500 million. So um, this is a short-term thing. Look forward, our cash flow will be absolutely fine over time. And again, we have a very strong history of that. Michelle, it's Kelly here. If I may, and I, I totally understand your point about this being short term, but a lot of analysts will always say being in the middle is kind of a tough place to be. Would you ever think about trying to go more specifically up market or to the value segment of the market for the longer run? You know, it's a, it's a great question. When you think about Kohl's, um, we serve 65 million customers across the country and online. So we're very broad. And yes, um, we have a lot of customers, as does America, in that middle income. We serve upper income and even, even some on the lower side. 
for me, it's about relevance. And at a time like this where it's about value, um, showing up um, with sharp price points, relevant promotions, our private brands. But on the flip side, our premium brands are doing very well. We've introduced a whole bunch of those recently, Tommy Hilfiger, Calvin Klein. And then just, you know, as we think about Sephora, I mean, it's a very elevated, prestigious beauty experience. Our shoppers are shopping across price points. And, you know, relative to the success of the partnership, you know, we had already had plans to do 850 shops. And we just announced today, we're gonna take that to the entire chain um, in the future. So we're working with Sephora on perhaps a smaller concept to go in our smaller stores. Michelle, before we let you go here, I don't know if we've had the opportunity to talk to you on air since the the deal or potential deal to go private ended up falling apart for market reasons or whatever. But um, obviously there was an offer at one point to buy the company for $64 a share. You're now sitting at below 32. Do you feel like you failed your fiduciary duties as a board to sell the company at that high price? You know, what I would say, Courtney, is first off, um, the board had tremendous diligence and rigor around this process. And so um, navigating for, you know, really since the beginning of the year, engaging with multiple bidders, I mean, the, the reality is that there was never an actionable bid over $60. Um, as the work was done um, and things came to conclusion, based on the financial markets and the retail environment, there wasn't an actionable bid. So the process concluded. And um, I think everybody on both sides did their homework. But at the end of the day, there really wasn't a, a bid for us to react to. So um, we're now fully focused on driving our business forward and serving our customers. And you've got a big half of the year to go, certainly with a balance of back to school and holiday. Michelle Goss, thank you very much for joining us here today. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.